seven million, we're three hundred million, we could bring it at another number. Let the people vote. I don't need a gang of five thirty five to make rules for me. So to me, Gary, those are the only two ways out. Direct democracy now and and not voting. Not voting for a criminal operation. Well, uh, just one final thought on this, Gerald. I believe we actually have a third option. I agree. I'm not going to vote for anyone who would be the lesser. I believe we, we disempower ourselves, and we re-encourage those to believe that they have a mandate they do not. I believe that we can have participatory democracy amongst each other. If we're not willing to have the states who are sold out to Alex and the federal government that are sold out to the lobbyist, then why not start getting out of their banks, not buying anything from them, not buying their cars, not buying their clothes, not buying their food, not doing anything they would expect of us. That's how we hurt them. That's how we change. When we start to look each other in the eyes and communicate and barter and exchange goods and services, insights and information, without them having to be the controlling factor, I think that's what more and more people are doing. And, Gerald, with your Trends Journal, you're certainly giving us insights on how that is done for all of our benefit. Thank you very much, Joe Slontake. Look forward to having you back soon. Oh, thank you, and I'm going to be listening to your show about the, the the raping of the Constitution next week. Yeah, the N N D A A A, the National Defense Authorization Act, and also the latest one. I'll go into great depth on that Monday night, 7 p.m. Thank you, Gerald Salante. Thank you. Now, uh, I will not have time to do all the other things. I will carry some of these over to our next day. However... We have two things. We have uh, our executive producer in studio who's going to talk about the Monday evening show. Who's, we're putting these together. We're also putting more shows on philosophy and sociology and history and ethics and behavioralism on, finding more and more guests who are what we call conversations with remarkable minds quality, meaning you haven't seen or heard these people normally, uh, and yet they have very important insights that go outside the existing limited uh, paradigms. But we have Luann Panessi on the line, and Luann is calling in. Hi, Luann. Hi, Gary. I just wanted to give you a quick update. Um, we have had an enormous amount of interest in your homestead program that you're going to be having in, in May. And uh, wow, um, I think we're tipping the thousand mark uh, of, of phone calls, and I still have more to clear well, I, off. No, 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 don't, don't. <laughs> I can't handle a thousand people. I can't handle one. Well, I know. Per- <laughs> so don't, don't you go sending all those people. All right. So don't take any more. That's that's filled up. All right, but I'm telling you, we have some very, very interesting people. There's a lot of a lot of qualified people, but the ones that are really going to come down. We, for instance, I have a group of of nuns, Gary, that are looking to create a homestead for people in their communities. Um, well, that's a, that's great. Now that's the kind of person helping teach people who are going to then help other people, and they're coming from a very spiritual place. Absolutely, I would go for that. And homeless people. We have homeless people that, that listen in, and they're very excited about learning this, and so they could become self-sustaining. I, I think will, that's I fascinating. I absolutely always set room aside, always set room aside, without exception, for those who are in the most need. If we cannot have a heart and compassion for those who are the least amongst us financially, then we become the least spiritually. So make sure that. And the homeless people can also listen to the show if they don't have an Internet uh, or even a radio, but just a regular telephone at 832-280-0066. Okay, now that's that's done, so don't take any more. I'm sorry, people, but uh, this was for, at this stage, this is just to uh, help see who is capable of doing homestead, showing them how homestead food production or, or um, uh, growing uh, can be done. And so I'm setting some time aside for that. And then we'll try to, once I get my new homestead, then I can do it on a larger basis and invite people uh, to be guests who want to learn this. But I don't have the room for more than uh, just a handful. So um, no more calls, all right? All right. I'm going to maintain the database, though, and I'm going to be still in touch with people. So um, not to worry. If you've already called in or emailed me, I will be, I will be speaking with everybody. Good. Also, tomorrow at noon, I'm going to be having a conversation. Uh, where am I at? Uh, Iowa? Tomorrow, I'm going to have a conversation. I think it is at noon. Noon? What time is that conversation tomorrow on a conference call? Yes, it's at 12 noon. 
Yep. Okay, that's different, uh, and that's uh, on the home-based business for helping people in their home, wherever they live in the United States, in North America. Give them that uh, phone number to call you on that, please. Yes, uh, call, call me at my home office, 631-504-6198, 631-504-6198. Or email me at whnn at aol.com, at whnn at aol.com, and I'll get all the information out to you. Good, and I'll be available for an hour tomorrow in the middle of my shooting schedule and travel. By the yep. way, I think what I thought first, I wasn't sure which... Uh, piece of legislation he was talk- talking about. I thought it was the National Defense Authorization Act, but I think he was talking about the executive order, which is the National Defense Resources Executive Order. That's the one I think he was mentioning, which was the executive order. Now, let's go into our studio in New York City and say hello to our executive producer, Richard Gale. Hi, Richard. Hi, Gary. How are you? Yeah, that's and you're correct. That was the National Defense Resources Executive Order. I was trying to get in on it, but <laughs> Mike was off here. So, um, yes, so for next Monday, we are doing, uh, we're going we're gonna to go, be, this conversation is going to go beyond just the National Defense Authorization Act. There, there are many acts that have been accumulative that have been now in infringing on um, the freedoms of people in America and our, our right and privacies, uh, even threatening our property ownership as well. Um, there is the National Defense Resor- uh, Resources Executive Order that we'll look at. There's Presidential Directive 51. Um, there were quite a few acts that we have seem to have forgotten about but the, uh, from the Bush um, administration, they and they're still in place. They're, it becomes an accumulative picture, and I think that's what we want to try to do in this broadcast on Monday uh, during the progressive commentary hour at 7 p.m., um, is to kind of look at the cumulative effect of these and rather than just um, piecemeal each one, uh, one through different broadcasts. Okay, and Brandon Turbeville is, will be, um, be joining us. He's... Um, He's an independent author, scholar, uh, has been around for many, many years writing on these kinds of issues, also on health freedom issues. Uh, and uh, all going well, Webster Tarpley we've reached out to, and William Ave- or excuse me, Michael Avery, um, who is a former president of the National Lawyers Guild. Um, who's, some have are seen you, in are news. Are you familiar with new information that has come to light that's been confirmed by General Petraeus, the head of the CIA? that they now have what's something we were talking about on this program over two years ago. They have smart technology chips that they're putting in virtually all of our home appliances that can monitor our behavior, our words in our own home. Well, that was, that's like part of the what the the, the uh, smart meter movement too. Yes, as well. you do so not it's... want a smart meter in your home. You do not want that. You get a smart meter. You've just set yourself up to be monitored twenty four seven. Your phone calls, what you do in your home, what you say, and what you say in the privacy of your own home can under the acts that we're going to be talking about, especially the Domestic Security Enhancement Act. That can actually be used against you. So let's just say in your home you say something to your spouse about the body politic or politicians of the president, that can deem you a terrorist. How far do you think they'll go? Well, they're already going there. We're already finding out the FBI has already put out the information that virtually everyone in the environmental movement that has tried to um, enforce environmental standards uh, on factory farms to show that they're not treating animals humanely are now considered terrorists. So you don't think that they can take it this direction? They're taking it this direction. Mm -hmm. That's why I asked Gerald that. So we're going to talk in depth with scholars about this because nobody would imagine that their television, their microwave, their refrigerator, their computer, all around that house, wherever you go, you can end up having your entire life monitored, all without your knowledge. They never have to tell you. They can collect information on you. Could you imagine if they had something in your bedroom when we're, we're uh, recording all of your uh, all of your conversation with your spouse, and yet we've allowed them to do this? This is a shame on us, not them. They're degenerates, low life degenerates, and we should call them as Gerald said. Our election is a farce. That's why I don't look. I do not believe in um, having anyone thrown off the air whether it's Rush Limbaugh, who I'm adamantly opposed to, because the moment you start throwing people off the air, then you're going to be thrown off the air. 
I believe that we have a right if they someone says something against us that is libelous or slanderous, you sue them. I believe that you can uh, take issue with people, and you can choose not to listen to them. You can choose to boycott their program and say, I'm turning it off. And that's what I advocate people to do. Turn off what does not empower you and turn on and read what does. But the moment they start saying, oh, we got to you know, get rid of this and we don't want that, well, then you've engaged in eviscerating the Constitution. There's no longer freedom of speech because you've just said your speech is the only speech worth listening to and everyone else that you oppose or oppose you isn't. And that's where a lot of this is going, and this is bad. So I'm seeing egregious actions on the left and the right on this, but I'm also seeing just the dumbing down of movements and the corruption of all these movements. And so from this breakdown, and I hope it breakdowns completely, then I believe we'll have breakthroughs because the people who see all this happening will then finally surrender the illusions that somehow they didn't have to be responsible on a personal level for the actions they're taking. And those who have been personally responsible, who long ago have given up believing anything that the left and the right official left and right says, and their media and their corporations and all their dilettantes, long ago saw these clowns for what they are. Those people already will be people who can teach by example those who are becoming newly aware. And I want to thank just one little moment. I want to thank 7,627 brand new listeners in just an hour last week. No advertising, no publicity, word of mouth. That's just one hour. You look at the numbers per week and you realize a lot of people are seeking out more empowering menus and venues for information. Thank you all for listening. I look forward to sharing more on our next program. A lot more to come. Have a nice day, everyone.